CS183S Lecture 13, Counterintuitive Sales Truths for Founders. This is a standalone lecture, or could be used in a series as well. Why don't we, as founders, just outsource sales and selling? It's not gonna work. Startup death spiral happens because of it. You can't delegate the primary function of being a founder, which is promotion and sales, which you're gonna have to sell employees and promote the fact that this is a good company to work at. So you can't delegate sales and selling and you can't kick the can down the road uh, to later on when you hire a VP of sales. You yourself need to do sales. This is as uh, eloquent as and unsophisticated as, oh, we'll just hire out uh, developers. This lecture is all about uh, counterintuitive sales truths that go against what a newbie uh, would think. And these are things that are completely goes against the grain of what you would normally think. Um, if you're new, it goes very much against simple common sense because a lot of these things are massively counterintuitive. Paul Graham made a great analogy, who's the co-founder of YC, Paul Graham. Jogging does not require a lot of mentors, but startups definitely have a entire ecosystem of mentors. Same thing with sales consultants. There are so many sales consultants that are brought in to hire, that are hired to improve people that are currently already making 120 grand in sales, doing technical sales. So the whole cottage industry is, it, it exists because so many of the things that you're doing with sales and selling are counterintuitive. There are so many sales consultants and sales seminars, uh, and these consultants go crazy making obnoxious sums of money uh, being a consultant to Fortune 500 companies. And the reason for it is the fact that so many of these uh, protocols, these methods, these recipes uh, are not common sense things. And because they're not common sense, people will pay to not go through the school of hard knocks. So that's why there's a huge cottage industry of it, why it's not in startups. I mean, it sort of is, but it isn't. Um, and also the concept of getting an engineer to sell is very unpopular and controversial. Semi counterintuitive truth, people wanna go where people are. People wanna go where people are. Now that's really tough if you're doing a startup because in theory there's nobody where you're at. So how do you create uh, something that's popular? Initially it starts by sales and selling and specifically at a booth, at a sales booth where you are doing some hand-to-hand -hand promotion, what's called in the trenches. So at a sales booth, it'll become more popular when you're doing red zone, yellow zone, green zone, which is actually lecture 16, it's a preview, but people wanna go where people are at. So you've gotta make your booth popular by making the red zone, the area by your salespeople, popular. This whole lecture, lecture 13, if it becomes a real class on campus, will definitely be taught by students as, I know, yeah. I shouldn't be the one teaching you these counterintuitive truths. You guys should be teaching each other these counterintuitive truths. So I'm gonna to try to prime the pump a little bit and get you guys uh, in step with finding out a couple things that are counterintuitive because the more you execute and do, the more counterintuitive things you'll need to document and share with your, uh, with your classmates and do a bunch of cohort mentorship. Massively counterintuitive. Executives actually want to get ripped off in buying a $5 slice of pizza from you. They view it as entertainment. They also view it as a parlor trick if you're an engineer that even knows how to do any sales or promotional work. So it's very counterintuitive to think that executives would pay a small sum of money to see you, you as an engineer sell. So. What happens is when you try to sell a $5 slice of pizza with a sign, $5 slice of pizza, everyone knows that you bought that slice of pizza for less than a buck in an entire pizza pie where you buy 13 pies proactively. 
Executives will actually like getting ripped off. Marketing. Marketing is a series, of, especially for a startup, it's a series of Hail Marys that are incredibly low probability plays. And that's why there's a YC article that talks about how startups, if you want to look up Jessica Livingston, how startups should focus initially more on sales than on marketing. Let me repeat that. Startups should focus more on sales than on marketing. It's incredibly worth repeating that there are sales consultants out there that are paid to help prof sales professionals sell. So if you're a newbie salesperson and you're not really hiring a consultant or at least looking for coaching, that is a mistake. And I'm not trying to get you to hire me as a consultant because I've got a job, but I'm trying to encourage and implore you to read sales books and study sales methods while you're trying to take baby steps towards selling one or two things because because these books will act as your consultants and a lot of these books are used for less than five bucks so i encourage you to buy try and consume sales books for basic truth 80 percent of the yc companies that get funded and fail 100 percent of them would end up doing better if they sold more things selling initially I would guess half of portfolio companies never sell $1 worth of stuff. Half, maybe more than half. It's atrociously high, which is why you're at Lecture 13, uh, broadcast from a dude's sofa. Literally, you're so, um, literally, I'm on the sofa. Selling a couple things is hard, so when you sell a couple things, it really helps you for when you're selling your own thing. This is seemingly smartassy, but it's not. CS Major CRO. You want to be somebody else's chief revenue officer. And when you sell dollars zero to dollars 2000, you're the CRO because you're the only revenue officer. So selling somebody else's app, selling somebody else's startup, selling somebody else's whatever cuts your teeth and helps you practice selling and promoting for when you do your own startup in the future. Not necessarily now where the onus and burdens on you now, just play and learn and do sales. And that's what CS Major CRO is. That's what lecture 13 is. That's what the previous 12 lectures are also meant to do. It's so difficult that people would just say, we'll just give it away for free. Free actually has a major problem. Free does not get you any engagement or commitment on the part of the prospect. So if selling is difficult and giving it away free is difficult, what's the answer? Hard sell them on something that is zero cost. It gets to be zero cost when you charge $200 or $20,000 and then fully rebate that same X dollar amount, $200 or $20,000. You now just don't have one unsuccessful transaction of free, you have two successful transactions, one for the $20,000 and the second one for the rebate, when you negotiate, hey, say one positive thing about me and I'll rebate you fully. Sell one sponsorship at a fraction of the value of a sponsorship. So let's say a sponsorship costs $2,000 or let's say your cost of your less than minimum viable party, LTMVP, is $200. Sell the full sponsorship at $20 for a gallon of coffee from Pete's Coffee. So you're selling and reducing to the recalculus just to pop your own sales cherry doing a sponsorship of your own product's premiere party or you're pre-launching your beta or you're launching a landing page. Just do some minuscule little thing that sells and promotes while you try to market. Further reducing to the completely recalculus. Let's say that $200 sponsorship, now you've dropped to $20 where you're just saying, hey, show up uh, and sponsor the coffee. The reason a coffee in an executive's mind uh, is valuable is coffee is what drives executives. If there's a meeting at 3, 3.30 uh, and there's no coffee, executives literally crap the bed or their conference chair. So, and when you ask for coffee service at the Four Seasons or the Westin, it's a couple of grand. Um, maybe that's all profit. I can't speak to that, but I do know that if you offer the sponsorship of an entire gallon 
uh, to your rinky-dink meeting, execs love it. I'm not saying don't do marketing. I'm saying that sales initially when you're doing marketing is what marketing's about. I Meaning you're initially gonna have to sell a bunch. You're not just gonna be buying marketing. You're not just gonna be buying signage. In fact, the sponsorships that you're selling, you're requiring other people to bring signage that maybe you co-brand. You're initially having to sell and do a bunch of hand-to-hand -hand signups as part of your startup sales experience. So why don't you sell and promote somebody else's startup initially? Getting from a state of no momentum to some momentum. And that benefit is you wanted to initially sell and practice and do one of the most impossible things in business that people talk about, people know, but they never do. Sales. Write this down. EUTWM PPM. Stands for Engineer Up a Tidal Wave of Momentum Perpetual Promotion Machine. What you're doing with sales and selling and integrating it with marketing is you're trying to get past no need, no trust and build a little bit of momentum because having a little bit of momentum increases people's trust in you. They see real world events. They see that you're a person that they can come kill if you just sold them vaporware, which executives have been burned since early on when you're a baby. They're getting burned by this stuff. Don't work for this. If you yourself haven't sold something yet, so, but if you have sold something, find a cohort in your class or your friend or your friend's friend and help them sell one thing where you're going to be the manager, you're going to be the Larry Chang, you're going to be the instructor, you're going to be the, the sales coordinator, you're going to be the co-founder, and you are going to get someone else to sell with you. If you yourself haven't sold yet, call me and I will sell something with you and you can get a half a sale out of it. You get to keep all the money, but you will get a half a sale out of it. It's kind of like party in the backfield where you don't get your first sack yourself. You would get initially a half a sack if you helped some other fourth year uh, all conference. <laughs>